today all of us know it's the age of technology and we have been seeing a lot of e-learning companies a lot of edtech companies they have been working towards one goal and that's nothing but giving the child the best learning experience making the child's life more comfortable while he's learning isn't that amazing it is but eventually when we think about a child when we think about a child in a classroom in the school socho कौन है वो जो इन बच्चों को डायरेक्टली इंपैक्ट करता है पॉजिटिव इंपैक्ट डालता है इज नथिंग बट अ टीचर यस इट्स ऑलवेज अ टीचर हु हैज अ डायरेक्ट इंपैक्ट ऑन अ चाइल्ड दैट मींस एक चीज बहुत क्लियर है दैट दिस टीचर हैज टू बी गिवन अ टूल इनको एक टूल देना है जो इनको और पावरफुल बनाए पावरफुल क्यों सो दैट दे मेक द एंटायर लर्निंग एक्सपीरियंस बेटर फॉर अ चाइल्ड एक्साइटिंग फॉर अ चाइल्ड and with the same thought in our mind we at all learn designed a product humne ek product banaya aur wahi product main aaj aapke samne present kar raha hu and the name of this product is teachers edge let me tell you in real sense this is a product this is a tool this is an aid which provides a edge to a teacher whether the teacher is teaching in a classroom that is offline or whether he is teaching online isn't that amazing yes it is so i am welcoming you come with me let's see and experience this amazing tool amazing teachers aid that is teachers edge so what you are seeing on the screen right now is a user interface of teachers edge what exactly is teachers edge teachers edge is a platform which gives access to a teacher to the presentations of different subjects across various boards matlab teachers edge ek aisa platform hai jahan pe teacher ko access milega kafi sare presentations ka he can use a presentation of maths he can use a presentation of science and he can teach in the classroom in a very 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 effective way chaliye ek example dekhte hain so we have selected a course that is ssc grade 10 and isme subject select karte hain maths part 2 aur ek chapter lete hain trigonometry chapter 6 aur yahan pe hum select kar rahe hain ppt that is the presentation aur uske baad click karte hain select and view ppt pe Wow, we have a beautiful presentation in front of us. अब देखते हैं ये प्रेजेंटेशन यूज करके टीचर क्लासरूम में कैसे पढ़ा सकता है वो इफेक्टिवनेस कैसे होगा क्लासरूम में लेट्स सी दैट सो एज यू रेड द सम नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड द एंटायर सम इन पार्ट्स द वेरी फर्स्ट सेंटेंस नाउ व्हेन यू रीड व्हाट इज इट से इट से द पर्सन इज स्टैंडिंग एट अ डिस्टेंस ऑफ 80 मीटर फ्रॉम द सर That means, सबसे पहला चीज जो हमें यहाँ पे समझते हैं दैट वी नीड टू हैव अ चर्च एंड अ पर्सन सो लेट्स हैव अ चर्च एंड हैव अ पर्सन नॉट लेट्स इन द सेम सेंटेंस इट सेज द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द पर्सन एंड द चर्च इज हाउ मच एट मीन्स द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दिस पर्सन एंड द चर्च इज 80 मीटर दैट्स वॉट वी अंडरस्टूड फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट सेंटेंस राइट Now, when we go on to the next one, he says, "When he looks at the top of the church, that means a person here is looking at the top of the church. church. The person is the observer, right? And the top of the church is nothing but that's the object. object. The moment an observer observes an object, what do we get? Object. We get a line of vision. But in this something, when you read the entire sum, do we have the height of the person given?" No. That means the height of the person is negated. So, if the person का height नहीं है, इसका मतलब it is considered to be a point. It is considered to be a dot on the ground. So, we take it as a point on the ground. Is this clear? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, the moment the person is a point on the ground, that means this line itself will act as a horizontal line. Horizontal line. Horizontal line. So, now we have a line of vision which is making an angle with the चर्च 
Now, are you going to sketch a church like this? No. no. I'm not going to sketch you. Are you going to sketch? No. no. That means this is just going to be a segment which is perpendicular to the ground. Yeah. And that means they say that find the height of the church. That means we are supposed to find the height of this perpendicular segment. Is this clear? Yes. Okay, now what have we got here? One triangle. Then in this type of triangle we get. So we just need to name the vertices and this is what we get. So we have named it as P, Q. You can name it as A, B, C or X, Y, Z, whichever we want here. But are you going to draw this data? No, no. no. Are you going to sketch a person, sketch a church? No. That means actually speaking, when you draw it in the examination, you are just going to draw a right angle triangle like this on the right hand side corner of your page. Is this clear to everybody? Yes. 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 So this is what you're supposed to draw. So I want all of you to actually draw this particular triangle in your book. Okay, now all of you have drawn the figure? Yes! So now the next part is describing the figure. So let's stand the figure. I want you to tell me, look at this and tell me what is PQ representing? Height of the church. That means the next step which we write here is nothing but PQ represents the height of the church. And what is P? The height of the church. Okay, now the next point is, let's talk about R. What is R? Represents the position of the person. What do you say the position of the person? Okay, perfect. Now what is Q R equal to? Okay, and what is the measure of that? Eighty. Yes. You can write Q R is equal to eighty. Yes. Now the next part is we have an angle formed here. What's the name of an angle? Angle PR. Angle PR. Yeah. What is this? Is the angle of elevation? The next step, angle P R Q is the angle of elevation. What's the measure of that angle given? That means we write measure of angle P R Q is equal to That's all about the description. So now once the description is done, we can move on to solving this. That's the third part of the subject. Now that we have drawn the analytical figure, that is, in other words, we say that's a rough figure. Now based on that, now we need to draw a fair figure which will look very similar to this, right? Yeah. So first of all, we need to have a circle with center P. P. Yeah. And what is the radius of the circle given to us? Now we have the center that is P. We need to take 2.7 centimeter on the rulers, right? With the help of a ruler. So we take 2.7 centimeter here. So that is what we take on the compass here. Yes. Now, keeping the pointer of the compass at P, we draw a circle. Now, what is the radius of the circle? 2.7. So that means we have a circle with radius 2.7 centimeter. So the moment we draw the circle, we mention that this is the radius, and we should write the length then and there itself. That is going to be 2.7 centimeter. Because well, this PM is how much? 2.7. Beautiful. Now that we want a tangent at M. So first of all, what we have done is we have extended. Yeah. Yeah. Now we need to have a perpendicular at M, right? Which will be perpendicular to this yeah. 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 right? So how do we draw that? It is nothing but we know we keep the pointer at M, draw an arc to the left yeah. and to the right. right. Beautiful. So we have an arc to the left, we have an arc to the right, and what else? What's the next step? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. We keep the pointer at uh -huh. yes, and draw an arc. Above and below. below. Okay, now that we don't want it below, remember. Because we already have a point. To have a line, we just require two points, two distinct points. A point already here. Dusra point here in China. So you need not draw it below. That happens when you are drawing the perpendicular. This is just a perpendicular. So what you do is take the pointer, keep it here, and cut an arc. Now do we have a point here? Yes. Now we have two distinct points. Because remember, whenever we are drawing a line, we just require two distinct Ten points. We already have one point, we have another point, now we draw a line passing through it. So we use a ruler here and draw a line passing through it. Now this is a line which we have perpendicular to PM. At which point? And yeah. We should mention it again. So now we have a line which is perpendicular to the radius at its outer limit. Okay. That is why we call this line as the... Yeah. That's why we call that line L as a tangent. So we have named the line 
And now we say that line A is the required tangent to the circle at point M. Is that clear? Yes. yes. Thank you. So what you saw right now was a teacher explaining a sum and the students were answering too. Yes, it was me who was teaching a sum from the topic trigonometry. Tell me one thing, when I was teaching this sum, did I ask the child to visualize a church? No. Did I ask the child to visualize a boy? No. Because the child could see that, see those visuals on the screen. And that's the reason they could easily draw the figure. At the same time, the teacher could teach the entire thing, the entire sum so very effectively. That means this tool enables a teacher to teach accurately with the help of visuals. Let me tell you one more thing. It's not only the access to all the presentations of the Q&As of the sums, but the teacher will have access to the presentations of all the concepts, not only for maths, but for science too. One more advantage the teacher would have by using this tool in a classroom is that the teacher can easily overlook the entire classroom rather than seeing the board. And as a result of this, the class control is much better. We know as a teacher, when we are using a blackboard to write, we are always using a chalk. We are writing, teaching, writing, teaching. But with the help of this presentation, the teacher is not using a chalk. He is using a modern age chalk, that's a presenter. And with the help of this, he can move around anywhere in the classroom, go to a child, explain a doubt, solve his query, and from wherever he is in the classroom, he can just click and move ahead with his explanation. By now, all of you would have understood that I teach mathematics. So let's say I'm in a classroom and I'm teaching a sum and I'm on the last step, that's the 10th step of that sum. And a child stands and says, Sir, I want you to explain the first step. Am I going to erase all the steps again? No, here I need not do that. I can just use a presenter click, move back to the first step and start revising all the steps till the end. The child can easily understand now. So, here a teacher can easily, conveniently recap and revise as many times as he wants. Now, all of us know as a mathematics teacher, when we have to teach construction on a blackboard, it's really a task and we know the reason why. It's because of that big geometry box with those big instruments in it. And there's a lot of precision required while using it. Now imagine when you have to use it, repeat it multiple times in multiple classrooms. That's a lot of physical exertion. But you saw with the help of these presentation, it was so easy, so convenient to teach construction. And let me tell you, it's effective too. Now, not only construction, the teacher would experience the same kind of comfort and the same kind of experience while teaching ray diagram in physics and also while drawing other diagrams in science. Now let's see some additional features of Teacher's Edge that a teacher can use while teaching. Let's say you want to go to a particular slide. Go to the bottom left of the screen and click this icon. 
and now select the desired slide. This pen tool that you see here can be used to annotate on the screen and this highlighter can be used to highlight a particular part of the presentation on the screen. This laser pointer can be used to hover over the screen. If you wish to write on a blank screen, click on the three dots. Now select the screen option. You have the black or the white screen to choose from. Choose the one you want and you have the entire space to write on. You can also zoom a particular part of the screen by selecting the magnifier option at the bottom left. Select the part you want to zoom and it will oblige. By selecting the presenter view, you can have an idea about what the next animation is going to be. Whatever we discussed till now were the benefits of Teacher's Edge for teachers and students. But let me tell you, there's a lot of benefit to the school as well. The moment this new age teaching tool is implemented in every classroom, all classrooms are transformed into a new age classroom. Now that we have implemented this new age teaching tool in all classrooms and all our teachers have started teaching using this tool in all divisions across the same grade, what we observe is uniformity in teaching. As a result, the entire teaching methodology is structured and standardized. As a school, we often recruit new teachers and post that we need to train them as per our needs, as per our requirements and as per our teaching standards. And let me tell you, this tool will definitely help you in this process. Now that all the teachers are in a great teaching space, and all the students are in a great learning space, there is a synergy. And this synergy will definitely improve the overall performance of the school. And to bring this improvement, I warmly welcome you to accept and implement this amazing teaching tool, Teacher's Edge, and create a great impact on the society. Thank you.